Let's talk for a moment about who the winners were over the last year. And there were some. Let's be fair. Let's be clear. If you were a lucky company, the pandemic made money for you. And it's just about luck. Nobody created the pandemic. Nobody set out to do it, despite Mr. Trump's effort uh, to raise such an idea. But if you're a company that delivers things, if you're a package delivery company, let me pick one. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Amazon. You made a lot of money because nobody can go to a store and nobody can go to a restaurant. Everything is ordered and delivered. And Amazon just lucked out and its shares went up. And its chairman, Mr. Jeffrey Bezos, saw his $130 billion, he's one of a few hundred billionaires in America, go up to near $200 billion. Wow, lucky fellow. And he kept all that money for himself. He benefited from illness, sickness, and death in a pandemic. Did he propose to share that wealth? To say, for example, I have $130 billion, which makes me the third or fourth, or maybe even the second richest person in, in the country and among the 10 richest in the world. So I don't need to go to $200 billion. So I can take the extra $70 billion that I've gotten out of this sickness and death plague and help my fellow citizens. Did he do that? No, he didn't. And none of the other billionaires that I'm aware of, and certainly not most of them, did anything. They just collected the extra money. We may all be in this together, but they didn't hear about that memo, did they? The billionaires got richer to the tune of almost one trillion dollars, while 20 million people are on unemployment insurance, using up their savings, leaning on their family and friends for the loans to keep them going, saying goodbye to the American dream if they still had hopes of acquiring it, of achieving it. Wow. You know how the billionaires do that? They move their money. They have advisors who say, oh, uh, don't leave your money over there because the pandemic's going to hurt that industry. Move your money over there. Sell those shares and use the money to buy those other shares. Though Amazon's going to do well. Everybody's going to be on the internet all day long. What else are they going to have to do? So get buy Apple, buy, you get the picture? If you have liquid wealth like that, you can move it around. That's what stock markets are for. So the people rich enough to be on the stock market are rich enough to hire the advisors who will make sure that they keep their wealth or actually go one better, grow it, which is what the 600 billionaires in America did. So while the mass of people were worried about getting sick, we're worried about their job. We're worried about their hours. We're worried about the debts they had accumulated. Other people were laughing all the way to the bank. The rich got richer and everybody else either got poor or got sick or both. What kind of a society, what kind of a system responds to a viral pandemic in such a way. And even worse, what kind of a system that responds in that way has a population that allows it? Has a population, the majority of people are coming out on the short end of this stick who are in the loser category. Why are they permitting it? I want to remind you all, in World Wars I and II, when something like this happened, 
when a war we were all in together was making some people rich while other people died on the battlefield or did without, the Congress of the United States passed what were called excess profits taxes, a special tax that said, if you're making money out of the war that's costing the lives of young men and women, you're going to have to give a large portion of that to Uncle Sam to help the larger society. Making profit off a war that other people are giving their lives for is outrageous, and we're not going to allow it. But we don't live in the America then. We live in an America now where the concentration of wealth at the top is so total that those fee people can buy enough of the Senate and enough of the House of Representatives to make sure not only that there's no excess profits tax this time around. Oh, it's fun to say the fight against COVID is like a war. Yeah, but not in that way. No, no, we're not going to tax people making money off this war. No, no, we're not. But again, the greed is such. The concentration of wealth at the top is such that there won't even be the steps taken to help those at the bottom modestly. You must have noticed but if you haven't, let me stress, that have twice already the $15 an hour minimum wage proposal has been defeated in the Congress. Already the proposal has been watered down, so it's $15 an hour, but only by 2025. You wouldn't want to help people too soon would you? It's even worse in the sense that we have seen a kind of harshness, a kind of not only refusal to do anything with the wealth achieved at the price of pandemic, but even the desire to help those at the bottom has been constricted. Twice the effort to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour has been defeated in the Congress. The proposal that is now still half alive wouldn't raise the rate to $15 an hour until the year 2025, by which time, of course, prices will have risen. So the real value of $15 then will be considerably less than what it is now. And the last time that the minimum wage was raised was in the year 2009. That's when it achieved the current level of $7.25 an hour, one of the lowest minimum wage rates in the industrialized world, or indeed in the world as a whole. It's extraordinary. Over those last 11 odd years, Prices rose in this country every year, sometimes only one, one and a half percent, sometimes two or three or four percent. And every time the prices rose, the minimum wage stayed the same so that what it could actually afford a person shrank. You'd think after 11 years of a declining real minimum wage, there wouldn't be this hesitation, but there is. So desperate are those at the top, they don't want anyone to touch anything. They don't want anyone to have any more money that might somehow, directly or indirectly, reduce the wealth they have already accumulated. And they work very hard to get the majority of people to somehow push against what it is that we all somewhere know ought to have been done. 